Hello there ladies and gentlemen and members of the jury, my name is Katie and you're watching my channel Super Console where today I'm going to be giving my verdict of Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice for the Nintendo 3DS. It's easy to see why the Ace Attorney series has become one of the most instantly recognisable and popular visual novels of all time. It's a series that revels in its witty scripts, completely over the top characters and detailed facial expressions, ingenious story links between games, random plot twists and fist pumping soundtrack. Let's get it right out in the open now, Ace Attorney is without a doubt one of my favourite gaming series ever, with the third game Trials and Tribulations which debuted in Europe in 2008 on DS remaining as the series highlight, no arguments there. But like Britney Spears circa 2007, even the best things in life take dips and dives every now and again, but does Spirit of Justice, another digital only release from Capcom and the sixth entry in the Gekuten Saiban series, live up to the high standards of its predecessors? Let's start with the story, arguably the most important element to any VN. Once again, Spirit of Justice follows the investigations and legal proceedings of our favourite band of defence attorneys, series veteran Phoenix Wright, rookie lawyer Apollo Justice and newly certified Athena Sites. Unlike in previous games, the characters are split up into two separate locations, as Phoenix Wright takes a trip to the spiritual far eastern land of Kurain to visit old friend and mysterious staple Maya Fey. Meanwhile, back in the US of A, Polly, I'm Fine, Justice and Athena are getting ready to watch Trucy's first big magic show at a nearby theatre, when they are thrust into their own legal battens and mini-crisis. The new setting of Kurain and its interesting cultural dynamics is one of my favourite elements of the first case. It's a land where defence attorneys are hated and have been banished from trials, and even has the insane law that if an accused is found guilty, the defence receives the same punishment, even if that means death. Visually, it's gorgeous, with rich and colourful background imagery to pull you right in and a great cast of characters to keep you invested in the story, including Rafa, the Princess of Kurain, with otherworldly powers to conduct seance investigations, which visualise the last thing a victim sees, hears, feels and smells before they die. But that's not to say seances don't have their own secrets and inconsistencies for you to dissect, so don't you worry about that. Despite his ties to Kurain and its interesting cultural and religious links, Spirit of Justice's newest prosecutor, Nayuta Sagmadi, however, isn't as charismatic as his predecessors, and is without a doubt one of my least favourite opponents. He just doesn't have as developed a personality as my favourite prosecutors, like Miles Edgeworth, Godot, Clavier Gavin, or even Francisca von Karma. Other than being an absolute arse and dishing out really bland insults every so often. As for newcomers to the series, while Spirit of Justice does a great job of introducing all old and returning characters, including my personal favourite forensic investigator Emma Skye and her snackoos, as well as providing skippable explanations for game and investigation mechanics, I wouldn't recommend starting with Spirit of Justice. The game really thrives on its developed relationships between each character and subtle nods to previous happenings in the series, and you just wouldn't get as much out of it or invest as emotionally in the story unless you've played at least Apollo Justice, which released on the DS in 2008 for Europe and North America. The courtroom dramas are just as exciting and over the top and goofy as any J-drama or anime, with every small win from the defence quickly being rebutted by the prosecution and every claim needing some cold hard evidence to back it up. And these scenes are really where each character comes to life, with witty and even banterous script and superb localisation efforts full of awfully amusing puns. Take the hippie monk from the first trial, P's love and understanding for example. In terms of character animation, there's a lot more movement than in previous entries, reminding us that the characters are more than just mere moving torsos. Each character is wonderfully designed and developed and has an interesting quirk, like Apollo's spiky head that completely deflates when his bluffing has backed him up against a wall, and likewise as you unravel the mystery in each and every final cross-examination, each of the villain's cool and calm, collected masks soon begin to break down to reveal their true identity witnessing their final confessions and angry outbursts, which is easily one of the most rewarding parts of the series. And you can be sure there's plenty of dramatic finger pointing and shouting of OBJECTION and TAKE THAT IN STORE. In terms of actual gameplay, outside of the courtroom you'll find yourself moving between in-game locations, scouring for evidence, questioning witnesses and helping Emma Skye with her forensic examinations, which unfortunately includes tediously dusting and blowing on 3D objects with fingerprints. 
Like in previous entries, each character has their own skill, be it Apollo's bracelet which reacts to a person's uncomfortable tics, Athena's AI widget which uses psychological analytics to pick up on witnesses' subtle emotions in their voices, and Phoenix's psych lock ability which breaks down mental barriers holding back a witness's full testimony. Once all information has been unearthed from a crime scene and weaseled out of every witness, it's time to head to the courtroom where you must present the evidence you've found to contradict a person's statement. It all sounds very dull on paper, but I promise alongside a dramatic, fast-paced soundtrack, a quirky and comedic script, and some pretty brutal rebuttals, it's truly all rather exciting. Especially when you're up against a princess who thinks it's their divine right to prove you wrong, hitting you with damaging penalties and sentencing you to death. But even so, as with many Ace Attorney games, Spirit of Justice still suffers with the same old issues, such as you being able to figure out an inconsistency, or a vital piece of information long before the game allows you to present your findings. It also falls victim to what I like to call video game logic, where in many cases there can be multiple pieces of evidence which could highlight the same piece of information, but you have to try all options regardless until you find the one that the game wants you to present. It's frustrating and makes you feel like you're unreasonably stuck, forcing you to continuously restart in the game and trying different, seemingly illogical routes until you hit the right one. There are also a few narrative elements that bugged me in Spirits of Justice, such as the game revealing the identity of the first murderer in Trial 1 moments into the game, which ultimately ruined the element of surprise and intrigue in the first case. And then there was another case which was unfortunately a great deal more dull and uninspiring than the others. But don't worry, the promise of witnessing more of Phoenix and Maya's adventures in the lands of Kurain are more than enough to keep you playing through even the most boring of sequences. Spirit of Justice is another charming and engaging entry to the series, with detailed 3D character models, dynamic animations, beautiful backdrops and an interesting story to keep you pushing on through to the very last spectacular scenes. It takes approximately 35 hours to complete the main story if you're reading all dialogue at your leisure, and its in-game cutscenes and reams of dialogue are always a joy to watch and read. If you're looking to take your first dive into the series, maybe consider taking on Apollo Justice first, or even starting from the very beginning, to get the most out of every story. But if you're a veteran to the series, feel confident knowing Spirit of Justice is another fun development in the franchise, even if it does indeed suffer from the same age old issues that its predecessors had. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you found this review interesting. Feel free to check out my other videos where I've reviewed a couple of other Japanese games, and I'll see you next time. Bye!